Welcome to Lumri and Ferndale Seventh-day Adventist Church. If you can recall, I've talked to you so far about character, integrity, humility, but this Sabbath I want to talk to you about another attribute. Again, these sermons are not just intended for you, it's for everyone, including myself. Like I said before, you need to take a minute and just remember that this is not me telling you anything. This is you submitting yourself to what God has to say to you through his word, the Holy Bible. My sermon title today is, I Want Cookies. A mother was in a grocery store with her little boy in the shopping cart. She just picked him up from daycare after work, and she needed to get groceries for dinner. As she went up and down the aisles, she accidentally went down the cookie aisle. Immediately, her son begins screaming, I want cookies. She calmly tells him, not right now, we have some at home. Her boy continues to scream, I want cookies, as they go down the next four aisles, getting louder and louder with each aisle. At the register, he was kicking, screaming, and, and yelling. And when the woman at the register asked, well, why won't you just give him the cookies? The mother looked at the woman and simply said, who? Because this is not my child, because my child doesn't get what he wants when he acts this way. It's amazing. We become a totally different person without even realizing it when we lose self-control. So much so that this mother doesn't even want to admit that he is her own son. So what is self-control really about? Let's pray before we begin. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, for giving us the opportunity to come today and worship you, to read your words so that it could impact our lives, but most of all to impact your glory, Lord. I pray that um, your word today helps us to really understand what self-control is all about. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Let me ask you a few questions. Where are you wrestling with self-control? What is controlling you and your life? What stops you from serving God and others? This next illustration is definitely not what self-control is all about. The story is told about an old farmer who, after 40 years of marriage life, decided that he should take his wife out for the day. They were driving past Alder Grove when he saw a sign offering flights over the countryside, he pulled over the car and inquired how much the flights were. 20 per person and being typical farmer, he started to haggle for $20 for two people. The pilot eventually said, if neither of you utter a word during the flight, it will be $20, but one word and it will be $20 each. The farmer agreed. Once off the ground, the pilot pulled all of his acrobatic stunts during his flights, but not one word did he hear from them. They landed at Alder Grove, and he turns to the farmer and says, that's an amazing self-control. Some of those stunts even scared me. The farmer replied, oh, but I nearly said something when my wife fell out the door. 
If this is not what self-control is all about, what is self-control really about? The following names that I will be using are purely fictional, as to stress my point. Julie appeared the same as us. She adored God and lived for Him, capturing every chance to serve God and others. However, place a, a little amount of alcohol in her soda and something mysteriously happens. She becomes an extremely different person. Alcoholism took over her life and she became helpless. She couldn't control herself anymore to refuse it and to avoid drinking more and more. Now, this is really hard for us to understand. And for whatever reason, Bill appeared to be controlled by cigarettes and vaping. If he is stuck in a place where he can't smoke, he tries to escape outside where he can get a light. Randy can't stop looking at pornography. Just a little peek. Alice can't abstain from eating those scrumptious desserts in her freezer and refrigerator. John, who is white, asked Kimberly, who seemed to him look like Asian, ask her, where are you from? She answered from Tennessee. He emphatically asked her again, no, where are you from? Oh, she said, I moved from Texas. Now John, Furious again, ask her, no, no, where are you from? Oh, my parents are from Idaho. Now, he was downright angry and rude and again asked her, no, no, no. Where are you from originally? I was born in Maine. And she ran out crying, not because she was sensitive, but because she was racially discriminated. Or maybe there is someone who seems to alter who you are and you lose control doing things or uttering things you truly don't want to say. Notice, in all these cases, there is a mutual problem, which is not having self-control. The meaning of self-control from the Merriam-Webster Dictionary means restraint exercise over one's own impulses, emotions, or desires. A metaphor that the Holy Bible gives us on self-control is seen in our biblical verse today in Proverbs 25, 28. A person without self-control is a city with broken down walls. The main metaphor in this biblical verse is people are the cities. And we can enlarge the metaphor to say self-control is a city wall. The Hebrew word of self-control has its origin in shutting up or restraining or retaining. A person who can't control or can't discipline or can't restrain his or herself is extremely defenseless like a city whose walls that have been broken down. And again, we can expand the metaphor to say self-control is a city wall just as a city can't survive without an intact fortification. We can't survive without an intact spirit. There are numerous noteworthy proverbs that are negative analogies to the idea of a damaged spirit. One is Proverbs 15, 13. A glad heart makes a happy face. A broken heart crushes the spirit. A person devoured of an intact spirit is by now broken into and abandoned as exposed as she or she was found. Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. Proverbs 18, 14. 
The human spirit can endure a sick body, but who can bear a crushed spirit? We find elsewhere in the Holy Bible in the book of Job. His broken spirit forces him to think about death itself. In Job 17.1, my spirit is crushed and my life is nearly snuffed out. The grave is ready to receive me. To put it in another way, whoever lacks control of his or her spirit is reduced to rubble. Consequently, we can't understand how the metaphor of self-control as a city wall attracts from the greatest vital lessons for daily life of an Israelite and us, spiritually, mentally, physically, well-being in God's holy city. So if we choose not to have self-control, disaster will overtake us immediately. We will be swiftly destroyed without remedy. The metaphorical wall of self is our spirit. It's damaged by sin, leading to a lack of, of self-control. This is caused by a lack of spiritual intact fortification. And if we allow ourselves to be left in that condition, destruction is bound to happen. The good news is God is in the industry of construction business. We can see this principle in the biblical verses, Ephesians 2, 19-22. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all God's holy people. You are members of God's holy family. Together, we are his house, built on a foundation of the apostles <coughs> and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of his dwelling where God lives by his Spirit. We can see in these biblical verses, in God's grace, as our personal contractor, he rebuilds the destroyed city using Jesus Christ himself as the cornerstone. And the good news is, as Christians, we are all delicately joined together in Christ becoming a holy temple for the Lord. It's obvious to a Christian, self-controlled means not to be controlled by sin. However, it's less obvious to a Christian, self-controlled means to let the Holy Spirit control you rather than yourselves. And consequently, we can be both controlled by sin or by the Holy Spirit. The goal of self-control for a Christian is totally different from a non-Christian. 1 Corinthians 9, 24 and 25 says, Do you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for an eternal prize. For a non-Christian, self-control is by me and for me. While for a Christian, self-control is not by me and not for me. Big difference there. There is only one winner for the non-Christian and the prize fades away within time. But there are many winners for the Christians and it lasts forever. For the non-Christian, is to elevate one's own status. I'm in control of my life for my purpose. While the Christian is not to elevate one's own status, I'm in control of my life to be utilized by God for his purposes. For the non-Christian, self-control is to abstain from all things that might offend or harm for one's own sake. While for the Christian, self-control 
is to abstain from all things that might offend or hamper for the sake of God and others. For a non-Christian, self-control is to submit to no one and to please only self. While for a Christian, it is to submit to God and to please God. You will be out of control without God. Without God, every negative emotion like anger, annoyance, bitterness, criticism, fear, greed, hatred, hostility, and rage will control your lives. I want cookies. I want cookies. I want cookies. And consequently, be alert of how you feel. Don't conceal how you feel. Understand why you feel the way you do. Take responsibility for a fault or a wrong. Don't judge yourself for the negative emotions you feel. You must seek God and confess you need Him. Listen to my next statement very carefully. Self-control is not about controlling self, but... Self-control is not about controlling self. You may be thinking that my statement is counterintuitive, contrary to intuition. However, self-control is in reality God control. By definition, isn't self-control a signifier of placing yourself in the driver's seat? Pulling yourself up by your bootstraps? taking hold of the reins? In order to be in control, shouldn't you need to be in control? The problem with that philosophy is it goes against the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Isaiah 55, 8 My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything that you could imagine. Jeremiah 79. The human heart is the most deceitful of all things and desperately wicked. Who really knows how bad it is? Proverbs 14, 12. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. And don't get mistaken or take the book of Judges out of context when it states in Judges 17, 6b, all of the people did whatever seemed right in their own eyes. The context is during the Bible times, things never went well when the people took control of their selves. The reason why we have disordered hearts is because we have disordered loves. Author Drew Dick stated, Biblical self-control is about keeping our loves in the right order. In a sense, we can only do what we love. When we succumb to sin, it's because in that moment, we love something else, pleasure, pride, comfort, more than God. We will always operate out of our loves. See, the reason why we have disordered loves is because we have misdirected ourselves. Again, self-control is not about controlling yourself, but self-control is, in reality, God control. Consequently, take actions by allowing God to show you the best way to express your emotion. Let God teach you how to change your mood. Give God consent to build in you positive emotions. Seek support and guidance from the Holy Spirit to help you let go of the past through God's Word, the Holy Bible. Take care of the body God gave you through exercise in which your body creates natural God-given chemicals that stimulate positive mood 
discharge stress buildup and release you from being stuck on negative feelings. Pray persistently. God, let me give up control of myself and live for you and others. We have to get ourselves out of the way. The more self-control we possess, the more control the Holy Spirit has over us. So spend less time in pondering how to take control and spend more time praying about how to let go of control. In conclusion, have you been screaming out, I want cookies, I want cookies, I want cookies. Today, will you admit you are a person who can't control or can't discipline or can't restrain yourself? The good news is in God's grace. As our personal contractor, he rebuilds the destroyed city using Christ himself as the cornerstone. And as Christians, we are all delicately joined together in Christ, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Self-control is not about controlling self. However, self-control is in reality God control. Today, are you willing to get yourselves out of the way? See, I am because I discovered today through the Word of God, that the more self-control I possess, the more control the Holy Spirit has over me. Amen. May the Holy Spirit bless you by controlling you as you continue your journey with Jesus Christ.